Hey guys, it's Pete. If you're a first time investor, then you've probably done a little bit of research around how you get started. In fact, how I get started is the biggest question that I get, certainly on Instagram from my followers. And there are lots of apps out there right now. There's Moneybox, there's Wealthify, there's Plum, there's Wombat, there's Free Trade, there's Trade212, there's Hargreaves, Lansdowne, Vanguard. There's a whole host of them. But in this video, I want to talk you through Wealthify, some of the things to look out for, and some tips from me to get you started. So before we dive into the video today, I just kind of wanted to give you guys a bit of a, a background as to why I wanted to do this video. Now, I'm a financial services professional. I've worked in the industry for 15 years. I'm a qualified financial advisor and I'm a qualified mortgage advisor. I've been around this stuff for quite a long time, advising clients on their own pensions and their own investments. And often when I've seen videos about apps like Wealthify and not the host of other ones that are out here at the moment, they're very, very high level. They don't really give you tangible stuff that's really important for you to look for as a first-time investor. That's what I want to do in this video. That's where I think you're going to get the extra value. So let's jump over to my computer right now. I'm going to talk you through Wealthify and some of the things that you absolutely need to watch out for as a first-time investor. So this is the Wealthify homepage, guys. And personally, when I land on this page, I think it's quite fresh. It's very, very refreshing, actually, when you compare it to other investment houses that are out there. And it's all about making your money work as hard as you, a new place to invest in. You choose how cautious or adventurous you want to be and we'll put your money to work. So very, very quickly, they're bringing to the forefront how they can help you as a first time investor. Now, as you scroll down, one thing that comes apparently clear is the fact that you have four areas potentially where they can help you. So either with an investment ISA, general investment, junior ISA or a personal pension. And this is very, very new for them as a provider. Now, if you are investing for the first time, you're likely going to be looking at an investment ISA or a general investment account, or perhaps even a junior ISA if you have children or you're investing for grandchildren. But these are the two that you're probably gonna be focusing on. One thing that I love that Wealthify have done is they have given a really good definition of their investor profile. So an investor profile is a description of where you feel or what kind of investor you feel you are. Now, whenever you look at investing in the markets, that is a priority. You have to understand what kind of investor you are. And they have five profiles here. So I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about these. Maybe we'll have a look at maybe the one, two, three, and five, just to see what definitions they've they've come up with. So let's have a look at number one. If you're a cautious investor, their definition is that your priority is to minimize losses. You're okay to accept small movements up and down in your plan value, but the aim is to beat inflation. You know, whenever you invest, your priority, your mission has to be to beat inflation at the very, very minimum. So as a cautious investor, that's what they've said. Let's have a look at number three. Number three, if you're a confident investor, which is kind of their, their middle of the road, your priority is minimizing losses is an important factor but as important as making gains so you're okay to accept movements up and down in your plan value but the aim really is to achieve good growth so that's kind of their middle of the road and when you get to the point where you have to make a decision of which of these profiles you fit in you'll be using these definitions to help you come to where you feel you fit let's have a look at number five number five is the adventurous profile and it's all about maximizing risks is the maximizing return sorry is the priority the risk of substantial losses and substantial movements up and down in plan value are acceptable with the aim of achieving the highest growth possible so this profile is really going for it this is a profile that is looking for the best returns possible and this profile doesn't particularly care about the money being lost over a period of time and possibly walking out with less than they already put in in the first instance so when you make your decisions these definitions are going to be very very important for you to identify how your investment is going to be comprised a couple of other things i wanted to point out on this home home page which i think are very important this is great the fact that they're showing that you have access to your investment you can see it you can touch it you can feel it you know what the investment makeup is here we'll get to that a bit later on 
and the fact this is very very important that they are backed by a big company so aviva they are one of the largest insurers in the country the last time i checked as of their annual returns last year the half yearly returns last year they were reporting 2.3 billion pounds in cash and let's face it that is important because we're in a situation right now where we've got the coronavirus and a company like this will need to pull on those cash reserves to make sure that the business is still in existence and this is often overlooked by a lot of new uh, first-time investors whenever you are placing your money your hard-earned money with a provider to help you get on the road to investing it's really important that as a first-time investor you do your due diligence on their financial strength are they going to be around if like in this situation that we are right now business has to come to a standstill for two weeks three weeks four weeks a month maybe even three months do they have enough capital reserves behind them to still remain operational and still be there to help you achieve your investment goals a lot of people glaze over this point it's a very very important one to pay attention to and certainly when I was advising, it was one of the first things that we would look at for our clients to make sure that we're putting them with a provider that has financial backing. Aviva is a huge company. So with these guys, knowing that they've got this backing is a very, very important factor for me and one that I hope that you pay particular attention to. Yes, they have awards, which is great. Um, don't pay too much attention to that. It is normally more of an egotistical industry thing, in my opinion. Yes, some of these are voted by, by uh, consumers, but a lot of them are voted by industry insiders who just look at, they, they have their own way of working. So these are great. What I would pay more attention to, though, are the client reviews. They use Trustpilots. They've got 142 reviews, which I think is relatively low for a company like this. But over 142 reviews their their rating is four and a half stars personally i think i would have hoped they would have had more reviews than this they have been going for a while now so my question would be why do they only have 142 reviews on trust pilot but what is very very good here is the fact that you actually get to see when the last reviews were in so there was one five hours ago easy to use platform five stars one 40 hours ago, recently transferred ISA to Wealthify, five stars. And one four days ago, happy investor. Again, another five stars. That's very important. This is also an important thing to have a look at. If you're going to be putting money with them, you want to make sure that they're working with the best in class. Fidelity, BlackRock is one of the largest investment houses on the planet, if not the largest. They run the most money. They are a big, big outfit, same as Fidelity. You've got iShares, which is part of um, BlackRock great fund great 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 setup they have there henderson aberdeen these are all household names legal in general so good partners that they're working with this is extremely important because inevitably your money is going to be spread across the offerings that these companies have the last thing i'll point out here is this section in the footer extremely important and one sentence in particular Wealthify Limited is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. This is extremely important for a number of reasons, and I'm going to come back to that in a minute, but let's go to their frequently asked questions. Now, who is Wealthify backed by? We already know that. Aviva. They state it right there. Okay, that's great. That's just reaffirming what we already know. But this section is very important as well. And this section right here is really, really important because this is telling you that as an investor, as a first time investor, you will be protected under the financial services compensation scheme for up to £85,000 with them. And that's very, very important. That is only possible because they are regulated and authorized by the Financial Conduct Authority. Whenever you look at any company to place any money with as an investor, they need to be authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. If they are not, you do not get the financial services compensation cover of up to £85,000 of your investments. And therefore, this should be at the very, very top of your list when you look at due diligence. Another thing that I like to pay attention to is complaints. Now, this is a tricky one because you won't know how they deal with complaints until you actually make a complaint clearly here they talk about the fact that you have a telephone number there that you can call there is a place that you can write into if you have a complaint 
they also try to explain how you can refer to the financial ombudsman service but better yet you're able to then click onto their full complaint policy right here and that's extremely important because you want to know that if things do go wrong and inevitably sometimes they do that they have a process in place to look after you so let's go and have a look at their products because i think that's what this is all about at the end of the day so again they've got the investment isa general investment account they've got a junior isa and they have pensions now again if you're a first-time investor you're likely going to be looking at your investment items. Why? Because you get a tax-free allowance every single year for £20,000. If you don't use it, you lose it. So it's very important that if you, as a first-time investor, if you've not paid any money into an ISA, do not look here. You need to start here. This is the very, very first port of call. Let's have a look at what they've got here under their ISAs. So this is their ISA page. And what I do like here is they give you some clear information about what an ISA is. So an ISA is a great way for UK residents to save or invest up to £20,000 tax efficiently each tax year. The tax year runs between April the 6th and April the 5th every single year. It explains that you have four kinds of ISAs. So you've got cash ISAs, investment ISAs, innovative finance ISAs, and you've got lifetime ISAs. Now a lifetime ISA, will be applicable if you are looking to purchase your first home and you're saving for a deposit, you get some benefits from the government as part of the lifetime ISA scheme. So they give you that information there, which is very, very important. Now you can, op you can open one each of the four ISAs per year and split your allowance between them. So for example, you could say, I've got 20,000 pounds, which is the limit, and open all four of these ISAs, but you would have to split either £5,000 across all of them or a number of your choosing across all of these four ISAs. But there is a limit to the lifetime ISA. It's £4,000 for the tax year. You can only open an investment ISA with Wealthify. So they're clearly signposting that they're not going to help you with a cash ISA or an innovative finance ISA. They can help you specifically with an investment ISA. Now it talks you through what the allowance is. And let's just click on here to start with your ISA. So they're asking you, and this, this page is great. I love this page because it gives you an idea of what you can expect as a first time investor. So let's just assume you haven't got an initial amount to put in there. You want to save monthly. And let's just say you want to save, I don't know, let's say 200 pounds per month. And again, remember that you have on here the five investor profiles that we, that we went through earlier. This is where you get to choose which of those you are. So let's just say I'm an adventurous uh, investor in terms of my profile and I'm saving 200 pounds per month. This then gives me an expectation of what my returns might be. And, I, and with this, I've chosen an ethical standpoint. So I want ethical investments, companies that don't in, you know, invest in things like uh, guns, armaments, uh, drugs, or uh, adult entertainment, pornography, that kind of stuff. It gives me an idea of what I can expect. So for 200 pounds per month, over a 10 year period, the projected value is 28,938. And I think that's really, really powerful. So that right from the get go, you get to see what you can expect as an investor. If markets perform better, 39,000. If markets perform worse, 21,000. So typically if you go middle of the road, this is where they're expecting you to be. 28,000 pounds over a 10 year period if you invest 200 pounds per month. You can increase that term. So you can have a look at it and say, what would it be over 15 years? Well, 15 years is telling you it's going to be 48,648. If the markets perform really, really well, 70,695. If markets perform worse, 33,429. And this all comes down to the impact of compound interest. Compound interest is a beautiful thing. Let's go and have a look at if there's much difference if I weren't an ethical investor and I wasn't too fast, if I just wanted to go into one of their original or ordinary uh, investment uh, options without the ethical stance. So I think there's quite a bit of a difference and that's clear. So that's something that you need to kind of be aware of is the fact that when you invest ethically, the performance might not be as good because they have less investment options. But 
that's your choice to make as a first time investor. Where do you want to be? But in this example, if I'm looking at a 15 year term, investing 200 pounds per month, they are projecting that I would invest 36,000 pounds and my projected value would be 51,838. If the markets perform really, really well, 75,767. And if the markets perform worse, 35,382. Now, if I were to continue and go through this, it now then gives me an idea of fees, which is an important factor. So as a first time investor, you need to keep an eye on your fees. Yes, you want to keep the fees really, really low because effectively this 0.83, this is an annual charge. So the lower you can keep this down, your better your returns are going to be. The last thing you want as a first time investor is to be going into something that's going to cost you 2% per year because it is going to drag on your performance. So they're very transparent in terms of what the cost is going to be for you. So it talks about the fact that the wealth of I fee is 0.6% and the average investment cost. So this is, they're going to place money with a number of people. So it might be BlackRock, Fidelity, Vanguard. The average cost for your portfolio, which is down here, is going to be 0.23% per year. So a total cost of 0.83%. And it's giving you a forecast of what your cost is going to be. So your yearly cost is going to be around about £9.27 per year. Now, where's your money going to be invested? As a adventurous investor, did I choose an adventurous? Let me just go back very quickly. I think I did. Yeah, as an adventurous investor, it's telling me here that I am going to be invested predominantly in shares or equities at 82%. And that's that orange slither right here. There's going to be an element of government bonds. Government bonds offer you a little bit more security. Um, I spoke about this on my podcast. So if you haven't listened to the podcast, go and listen to that. I talked about how investments are built. Um, I explained what bonds are there. And you have a little bit of cash, which is that slither. And you have a little bit of property, which is that slither right there. It's very, very important that you pay attention to this screen specifically. And you need to pay attention to these two documents here. The fund fact sheet will give you further information about how the investment is comprised. So where is your money placed in terms of the providers that they use, so on and so forth. So you need to pay attention to these two right here as well. So this has just been a really quick whistle stop tour of Wealthify. If you're a first time investor, it's really important that you pay attention to a number of things that I've just highlighted there. Um, and really do your due diligence. Yes, cost is important. You need to keep your cost down, but you also need to have a look at the look at whether a provider has the expertise to help you achieve your investment goals. That should be the most important thing for you as a first time investor. To help you guys a little bit further, I have produced a guide that is specific to Wealthify. And what it basically does, it takes you through the screens that you encounter on the app and it explains what you're looking at and it explains all of the options to, uh, that are available to you. So for example, investment ISAs. Why would you choose an investment ISA? What is it? If you're looking at a junior ISA, what is it? When would you use it? When is it right for you? It's designed to kind of help you get to a position where you're not second guessing yourself and you know with clarity that this is the right option that I should be clicking. It's there as a guidance tool. I don't know your personal circumstances, it's not there to give advice, but it's there as a guidance tool. Again, I'm gonna link that below in the descriptions. If you've watched this video and you found value in this, please don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell. There are videos like this every single Monday. I've got more videos talking about apps specifically that I'm gonna run you guys through. And one last thing, if you've not listened to the podcast, I talk about investing, I talk about a lot of stuff, finances, it's called The Conversation of Money Podcast. It's available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. So guys, I'll catch you next Monday, take care.